Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Holder Heck channel. We're gonna go back to the old format this week simply because I'm incredibly sick and don't feel like being on camera, as you can tell from the awful way I sound. But, with that being said, the topic this week is incredibly fun. I'm finally doing the part 3 to the STFU Mage Guide on how to farm gold as all the other classes. Um, Solheim featured me in a top 10 gold farming guide a couple of months ago, and I was incredibly flattered by that. I never really made this channel as a gold farming channel, that was never really my focus, but I got really sick of the mages and hunters and warlocks bragging about how much money they have and how they don't understand how other people aren't rich, and I found that to be incredibly obnoxious. So. I wanted to show people how to make money in this game without playing one of those classes, and that created two videos. But, some of those methods are a little outdated, and I feel like I can update some of them and give you some of the new ways to farm gold, you know, not as a mage, warlock, or hunter. So, let's get into that right now. So the first thing I want to get into is some of the methods that I was talking about in the first video on how to farm gold that are perhaps outmoded now, and the ones that are still pretty good. So the first one we're going to get into is going to be the Felcloth farm. This one was personally good for me because I have to go out and farm these satyrs all the time for dark runes anyway for raids. So getting the fell cloth at the same time was a nice boon, especially when they were three to four gold each. This was early in Classic WoW though, and the fell cloth market has completely tanked. You're lucky if you'll get a single gold for a fell cloth now. So going out of your way to farm fell cloth is really a giant waste of time, and I wouldn't recommend it unless you're already out there farming the runes anyway. Now, that being said, one of the other methods of farming gold that I mentioned before, farming elemental fire, that has only gotten better. People still need greater fire protection potions, especially now in Blackwing Lair with like Fire Maw being super annoying and everybody still has to fight Ragnaros. So those are now going for seven, eight, nine gold each on my server. Farming elemental fire is a fantastic way still to make money. You can get those in Ungoro, you can get those in Fellwood, you can get those in BRD, you can get those in Arathi Highlands. There's tons of places to farm elemental fire. Most of them are probably going to be camped heavily, but again, you could go into BRD and fight the elementals in there, maybe one or two man it and just split the profits. Additionally now, Elemental Earth is worth a lot of money because people need it for elemental sharpening stones and additionally in phase 5 people are going to need it for the greater nature resistance potions for Huharan and whatnot. So those are really really easy to farm. There's tons of places to farm it. I personally go for the place right outside of Kargath. There's two locations you can farm these uh, directly outside of Kargath as well as the other elemental spawn points in uh, Badlands, but any place there's level 30 to 40 earth elementals, you know, they can drop elemental earth, and I will link all of those places below, as well as all the places you can farm elemental fire, and if for some reason you're farming fell cloth, I'll list that too. Along the lines of things you can farm while you're farming, if that makes any sense, kind of like how I need dark runes and I'm getting fell cloth anyway, so that's nice. You can farm the fur blogs in winter spring for their eco, which I do for raid consumables, and then you also get winterfall fire water. Most people just use this fire water as it is far easier to acquire than the giant eco in south winter spring, but if you can get a group together of two or three people, you can go down and kill these giants incredibly easy. You can all share the eco, which becomes a better raid consume than fire water, and then you can sell your fire water. Or, if you just don't want to be super try hard, you can just sell the fire water anyway and make a very good profit from it. 
Now, one of the other ways I mentioned you could make money in the old videos was gathering professions like herbing and mining. And of course, you can still make money with those professions running around the zones and herbing and mining as you see things spawn. But now, since everything is so over camped, it's really, really hard to just kind of pick a zone and herb the zone because you just have too much competition. So you have to find instanced versions of herbing and mining, and thankfully, those instanced versions of herbing and mining are in the exact same place. In Dire Mall East, you can solo herb very, very easily. Just drop down, herb in the little courtyard there, and then you can pour it out and refresh with an alt. You can do that a bunch of times before lockout, and that's a really easy way to stock up on Dreamfoil, Grom's Blood, and uh, various other high-level herbs. Now, you can do the exact same thing with mining. As before, you can solo Dire Maul East as a few of these classes. You can solo it as an elemental shaman. You could solo it as a shaman with no talents. It just takes forever. And then you can get the mining nodes at the very, very back where you can get your arcane crystals and actually make money. I personally duo DM East with a warrior who has mining, and then we herb and mine and all split the profits, and it works out very, very very well. I talked about this in one of my other videos, and the warrior that I do these Dire Maul jump runs with made a little video of his own, and you can check that out in the description below. Now we're going to talk about herbing a little bit more, because I know a little bit more about herbing. So, obviously high-level herbs like Mountain Silver Sage and Dreamfoil, etc. are going to make you a lot of money. However, lower-level herbs, specifically Cadgar's Whisker, Purple Lotus, and Winter's Bite are going to give you way more money than they used to because they're used in very specific potions that are highly, highly sought after. Cadgar's Whisker and Winter's Bite is used in Elixir of Frost Power, which every single Frost Mage who wants to parse is going to be using. So both of those, their prices have inflated astronomically. And Cadgar's Whisker and Purple Lotus are used in Magic Resistance Potions. Now this is a potion that I didn't even know existed a couple of months ago, but it's super powerful. For two minutes, you get plus 50 all schools of magic resist. This is used by people in Warsong Gulch to just constantly resist dispels, frost bolts, fireballs, everything. Like, the flag runner for sure is gonna want this, and anybody who doesn't want to deal with being annoyed by mages is gonna want to use this. So stock up on Cadgar's Whisker, Purple Lotus, and Winter's Bite, and you are gonna be making a lot of money. One of the other low-level herbs that I forgot to mention that's a great way to make money, reliably, is Grave Moss in the SM Graveyard. The only competition you have for this is your own clearing time, as you will probably hit five instances an hour very quickly, but this herb is used for shadow protection potions, which has its place now in Blackwing Lair for certain fights, and will have a definite place and definite need in your raid for Phase 6 with Naxxramas. So, you can stock up on Grave Moss to sell later, or you can stock up on it now because people are definitely buying it now. Now we're going to talk about the holy grail of herbing, the Black Lotus. Ever since these things exploded in price, from at the end of phase 1 they were somewhere around 40 to 50 gold, to now in phase 3 moving into phase 4 they're 120 to 150 gold, they have become incredibly difficult to acquire. This is because you have neats and bots doing 24-7 loops and camp spawns in every zone they exist. So, you really have to think outside the box as a way to get them. Now, you have to know fundamental things about a Black Lotus. When one is picked in a zone, one will not respawn until about 45 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes after that one was picked. So, what you have to do is once somebody in your guild picks a Black Lotus, you and a couple other people who are herbing move to that zone closer to the 45 minute mark and stay around a couple spawns at once. Then, there's a better chance of one of you getting the next one, and then you can perhaps share the profits. It would be incredibly hard for somebody who is not multi-boxing or botting to reliably get a Black Lotus on their own in any zone at any time. 
So I highly recommend you form a team of people and you all spend a few hours a week trying to triangulate like when you can get a black lotus in a specific zone and this will work out for the profits of everyone now we're going to move on to fishing fishing is an incredibly easy way to make money although it is also incredibly boring there's a couple places right now where fishing is going to make you more money than others any time after midnight server time in Moonglade or Faralis, you can fish up Nightfin. Nightfin is used for a mana regen cooking recipe that hopefully you have leveled cooking and you can cook up and sell because it's worth more than the fish, and that is a great way to make money. Additionally, you can fish up Winter Squid and Ashara. Winter Squid is going to be going away very, very soon as winter is ending, and the price of Winter Squid and its consumable are going to only go up as summer progresses. So I highly suggest you get as much Winter Squid as possible and make yourself constant passive income from selling it over the next few months. You can also fish up Essence of Water from the pools around Ashara as a great way to make money as you are getting Winter Squid. Winter Squid will probably, and I think it is currently, worth more per stack than a single Essence of Water, as Essence of Water has somewhat tanked, but you can still get an Essence of Water for 9 to 10 gold, and that's definitely nothing to ignore. So that, my friends, concludes Shut the up mage part three saving the classic wow economy i hope these methods of farming gold are very very useful to you and i hope you're able to buff your bank account in the future um if you like this content please give me a subscribe and ring that bell so you're notified of new videos follow me on twitch at the holder heck otherwise i hope you guys have a fantastical rest of your day i'm gonna go drink like half a gallon of tea and overdose on some Hall's lozenges and I will be back next week with another informative and infotainment focused video. Bye bye Your body can only burn it, transfer. Burn it, burn it, burn it, burn it. My wife is in- I'm dead. I'm dead. I died. Keto is fine for like two to three months. But after that, a human body needs carbohydrates.